Hello, and welcome back to the workbench. Today what I'm looking at is replacing nickel metal hydride batteries, in this case, in a little shaver that has a couple of nickel metal hydride AA cells driving it. These were the dead cells, and I replaced them with a set of Panasonics instead of using new uh, suspect off-brand nickel metal hydrides. I'll show you why later in the video. These were not at all what they claimed to be. I'm gonna have another video coming up soon with that on it. If you like the content, please subscribe down below. Give us a thumbs up. Thanks for watching. Today I have a slight problem. I need to replace the batteries in this shaver. I'm just doing a bit of replacing on the nickel metal hydride batteries. I'm going to direct solder them instead of using the tabs on them to, to hold them in place. So I just need to remove this with a razor. Get these out of here. One of them is dead. It's showing uh, as not taking a charge. It's It's got very small charge on both of them if you actually check across both the batteries and uh, get them out of there, and then I'm going to replace them with these. So I tested both of these out, both these types of batteries. These are kind of a joke. I got them, I knew they weren't 1800 milliamp hours, but um, as it turns out, they're not even the usual rated 300 milliamp hours that you'd get for uh, solar use. These are basically battery-shaped objects, but I'll show you those in a second. These were a little bit better. They're old. I've had them sitting around for a long time, but they were holding far more of a charge than these were, so that's what I'm going with. So, I got this part already, pulled all of the components off it in advance, since that wasn't too interesting. It took a bit of mains force to pry them off, but now it's all set, ready to go. Basically, it's just a simple circuit that drives this motor. The motor oscillates and causes this to vibrate. I will check it out when it's done. It's probably kind of neat. And I'm not sure how it works exactly, because it wasn't working when I pulled it apart. And that's pretty much it. There isn't too much on here, just a bunch of support circuitry. Take the power in, charge the batteries, and cause the motor to go like that. And uh, lights up to tell you when the battery's, battery's out. So most of the logic is probably in the charging for there. And uh, <clears throat> then just some flow control for the, for the actual motor. But I'm going to go ahead and detach these batteries from the, from the circuit board. Hopefully I can get these off without destroying the board itself. Remember, don't ever try to solder lithium-ion batteries. That'll just result in death and destruction. But these nickel metal hydrides, you can get away with soldering. I still wouldn't recommend overheating them. You might still manage to blow them up somehow. So this is the strapping you typically use for the batteries, whether you are soldering them down or if you're going to do the spot welding for the batteries on there. I do actually have the parts for a spot welder set up. I just haven't got around to building it yet. Looks like one of those interesting things that you can either build yourself or you can you can purchase one for a few dollars. They're not very expensive, so if you're going to be using it for anything more serious than stuff like this, you might actually want to go go ahead and spend the uh, $50, $60, whatever it costs you for the the cheap welding unit and go ahead and use that instead. It's probably a bit more effective. All right, soldering gun's hotted up. Let's get this pretend. Maybe if I flip it around this way and heat up the battery and the tab simultaneously, I can get them to both heat evenly. Yep. There we go. So that works. Oh, there we go. Got it soldered. That is not that easy getting it soldered onto the tip on these. Ah, good. They labeled the board, so I know where the old ones went. Nope, and I will need to set some solder on these first. Since they're going to be soldered in place, unlike the other ones. Alright, let's see. There we go. Alright, now let's try to get this soldered down before anything fails. This is not the easiest thing in the world to do. 
as it turns out, getting both the battery lead heated up just enough and the lead from the the nickel leads from the device or the soldering leads is pretty tricky. But it seems like it's a doable job. That heated up the battery more than I would have liked. But I don't know if you can see that, but that's looking good so far. Coming up the warning light anyway. Let's see what we're getting on the battery. So as you can see, it's showing, well, got them backwards. Let's straighten that out, and it's showing 2.785 volts. So the battery pack's working okay, but still not getting anything when I press the start button. So hold on a second, let me plug it back into the charging cradle. I'll see if it does any good on there. The device might be dead as well as the battery, so this might have just been a lost cause as far as repairing it goes, but the repair was successful. Batteries went in okay. Which is nice. I didn't know how that was going to work out, so... Better than I expected. Okay, that might be enough to get it in the charger. Let's see. So it's now accepting a charge. I'll come back in a little while and see if it's working. I'm not sure exactly how much draw the batteries are required to put out in order to make this operate and that might be where I messed up on this. The battery replacement was a success though. They're showing uh, nominal 2.7 and since they're both 1.2 volt batteries that's actually pretty healthy. So we'll see if it works in a minute but for now let's uh, let that charge back up. All right she works. Not sure exactly why it wasn't coming up before. There might have been some logic detection going on with the batteries where it needed to be plugged into the base again to receive a slight charge before it would start up because it had previously detected that there were dead batteries in it. But there we go. Soldered batteries in excess. The old batteries are removed. The junk batteries have been determined to be junk. Actually, let me show you what I saw on these and walk you through it quick. So. What you're seeing right now is those batteries, the purple ones, uh, they only came out at, I think it was 1.27, but you can see it on the screen there right now. And that's the total milliamp hours they were capable of putting out. The batteries actually have 1800 milliamp hours written on them, and as you can see, it's actually 100 and something. The old Panasonics, the yellow ones, which you're seeing now, that yellowy orange, are actually much more uh, they have much more ampacity left in them, even though they're pretty old, well used, and have uh, have certainly been sitting around in my battery bin for for quite a long time. So, see, the the older batteries were still better than those purple ones. I'm going to do some tests on those, and I'll 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 bring them back up, and and we'll see what they are compared to some standard nickel metal hydrides. I've got some alkalines in. I'll also throw in some of those uh, high output, whatever they are, batteries, the the just straight zinc ones. Um, and I'll, I'll put the Nizens, which are actually really good. And although they have some weird characteristics, they're I like those personally for rechargeables. They're just incredibly hard to get a hold of because they never really they never really took off. So getting new ones is is problematic. I don't think anybody really produces them anymore. So we'll, we'll, we'll take a look at those batteries later. But right now I'm happy with this. That's success. Good to go. Thanks for watching. See you next time.